All right, so unless you've lived under a rock for the last five, six years, everyone here knows large language models. And I'm here to talk about LLM query and auto reconciler. So actually, I have a colleague as well, Mamata Maganti, who's not here today, who has been helping me with the development of this. So LLMs, we all know, good at summarization. You can query large data sets uh, with something called retrieved, retrieval augmented generation to improve the results. And you can also have some memory involved if you do fine tuning of the model. So what is LLM query? It's an NSO package with actions. It's actually talking to the LLM for you. And this is tested and developed using something called Olama. And you have a handy link here. And you can get started in a few minutes. You just git clone and run it in Docker. So LLM query has some basic interactions. You can prompt anything to the LLM. You can chat with it in a conversation. And there's also some conversation helpers. OK, so basic problem right now. The LLMs hallucinate and provide different answers every time. Solution one just mentioned, retrieval augmented generation. Uh, there's also something called Raptor, which is more advanced retrieval augmented generation, where you have some clever summary, summarization made at leaves and clusters, and then a high level summary as well. And this everything is pushed into a vector database model. And then you ask the vector DB together with the all the summaries, we push those to the LLM, and then you get an answer which is hopefully better and less hallucinating than the normal query. And then the best solution, we all know, like you can, you can feed the model training data, and then you generate a new model, right? So you do some fine tuning. So all of these solutions require backend development, so that's not my job today, I'm, I'm here to show the, the NSO package. So basic conversations, you feed information, you get something back, then you ask based on the previous messaging. All good, right? Then we have this handy conversation helper action in the LLM query package. Currently, we, we support queries on device configuration. So you just feed a list of devices. You automatically get the running config pushed into the conversation. And based on that, you can have a query. Then you have the capability to make a list of any show commands you want, like RPC calls. And those are also pushed into the conversation. And you can have a chat with those. And then, quite interestingly, you can also feed it a log file. Um, so no, not necessarily a good idea to feed the entire log file. Um, as you all know, it's a bit, uh, you will run out of tokens quite quickly. Uh, but uh, a tail of the log file usually works quite well. And this is handy because you are not always uh, on the server, right? You can't really go into the logs. Uh, maybe you're on the web UI, you're, you only have actions to perform, right? So you can actually ask about the logs from a remote location, like not, not on the server itself. Then I think that this is quite nice. You can do queries on SES state if there's any, anything going on in NSO 
operationally. Then again, with backend development, you can also have some internet queries. Let's say you want to find develop DevNet uh, guide to, to actually develop something in particular. Then you can have an agent designed for that. And then I envision that you can also generate uh, basic service payloads basing, based on the Yang model you feed to the model. So, an example of the conv helper action. Okay, make a list of devices and show commands. You feed a device list and the show or RPC commands in a list. And this will actually do show IP routes, show IP ACL, show interfaces to any number of devices on the list. And then you can have the query attached to that. So some future development on LM query. So RAG or Raptor, and this is quite interesting. On, in Raptor, I'm not going to read it out, but basically the this is how the structure goes. You have raw documents. It's fed into clusters, and then you do cluster summaries, and then you embed the clusters again, and then you have a root summary, and everything goes into the DB. You feed it into the LLM. You get a better answer, uh, hopefully without the hallucinations involved. Then you have the retrieval augmented fine tuning which is now available for running locally on your Llama 3 models. And this is a link to get you started with that. It's a full credit to John Capobianco, who has a YouTube channel. He's a fellow Cisconian. So I follow his YouTube re quite religiously, to be honest. OK, so on to the reconciliation part. But first, I want to step back and talk about the importance of architecture in NSO. So if you, if you have a software factory, or you aim to have a kind of software factory approach, then you need to think about your service architecture. So this means that the customer-facing services layer should not be configuring devices directly, but only other services. You can have multiple layers of CFS services to abstract and narrow down features if you need. But also, you can have the CFS layer talking to the RFS layer, uh, in a, where the RFS layer is much more modular and, and smaller in in its um, scope. So RFS layer, as I mentioned, they only configure devices. And the stupider they are, the better the results for the reconciliation. However, as you can imagine, the, ref the effort of reconciliation becomes doubled, right? But simplified, which is why this is a good solution. And if you need more information, you have uh, handy guides on the DevNet to d dive deeper into stacked services. So why do you want to do reconciliation? So disaster recovery. Imagine you lose your CDB of services overnight, and you don't have a proper backup. And the truth is always in the network, right? So this enables you to do some brownfield DevOps, basically a bottom-up approach to development, and the service factory approach, as I mentioned. So to aid us with this, NSO has automatically generated APIs which you can output for you, the service 
instance XML template. And with some clever Python logic, we can output the X paths in the CDB for the service instance configuration. Then you can remove the service, you discover them, uh, you expect no difference at all when you're actually reapplying the reconci with Reconcile Helper. So this brings me on to Auto Reconciler. Auto Reconciler is an NSO package with actions. So this would be a good DevOps cycle for a pack any service delivery. So you add the package to NSO, compile package load, you modify service model, you create some new mo instances, modify existing ones, you run the auto reconciler generate action. This will do some clever XML generation with the, the aid of LLMs. Then it removes the service, commits no networking, creates the reconcile helper XML template, and applies it, expecting no diff set in the devices layer, only service layer. Then you can verify the service configuration and add both the new service, con the new service, uh, developed service, and the reconcile helper into Git for pipeline testing. All good, promote it, or you start over again. All right, so demo. This is what we've all been looking forward to, I hope. Okay, so basic configuration you need to have. What it, where is your server located? What is the port? And which models reside uh, in, in that server? So these are the models I have been trying out with. So what can you do? Ask a question. What is a good way to travel in Paris for a single day? OK, very good. Not really interested in this, but at least the model works. OK, so what is happening in my LLM query log? OK, this is a LLM inception. It's actually seeing that it's actually generated with a llama query, right? So it's finding out that it's actually talking, seeing a log based on itself, right? Of course, it's just summarizing, as you all know. It's not actually realizing that it's talking to itself. OK, so the reconcile action. I feed it a service instance, which is currently in my CDB. I choose the model. I have to provide a conversation sample with the reference configuration, which I'm after. Not the same reference configuration, but a similar one, right? I also feed it two summaries, which I got from ChatGPT4, on how to actually go come from an XML template, an XPaths, to an XPath-based XML template. And now we can see that it's returning some data. And there are some errors. For those of you who are eagle-eyed, you can see there's an error. And I feed back the error to the model, hoping that it's actually going to correct itself. OK. Interestingly, most of the open models, which I'm experimenting with, are not able to actually correct based on these instructions. So it's an infinite loop, basically. 
but I have a kind of, I put some recursive limits, um, so it will actually stop after 20 retries. All right, so we have finished our loop. We still have an error, right? So this is some configuration generated by ChatGPT4. And this is from code Gemma. And this is the reference one, which is the correct answer. So those eagle-eyed amongst the viewers can realize that ChatGPT4 is the, by far the best one. And I'm just going to show you how the actual reconciliation package runs this. So I'm removing the any VRF RFS instance I have, commit no, no networking. Sync from the devices. So if the model actually provided me something that could be reloaded automatically in the code, this would be all automated. Now I do the redeploy of the package to load the reference template. And then I do my simple reconcile helper, which already has a service, but I'm redeploying it and finding only our, the service configuration, no device configuration being pushed, which is correct. And we can redeploy also with the reconcile if we want the ownership of those. And we have some nice configuration. Okay, so. This is the messaging I'm using for feeding the model. So I'm going to do this in the UI of Bridge IT, which is running the chat GPT-4. So I'm just moving the query I did to the LLMs into our Bridge IT, which is chat GPT-4. And now it's churning away, doing a summarization of the actual um, yeah, so that's a summary based on the reference. Then I provide the new query, which I generate automatically to feed the LLM based on the VRF RFS service. So we have the XPaths, the Northbound XML template, and I want it to combine the two, right? And it's churning away, churning away. And basically, this is just to show you that the reference template is basically what I get out. So, what I've learned is that basically the open LLMs are not capable of the same uh, kind of response. When I feed error messages back to it, it doesn't actually do anything. It just churns out another random answer instead of following the instructions. While ChatGPT4 can do very advanced actual corrections based on the error messaging, which I try to feed into the open LLMs. So, as I mentioned, 
we have a t configuration template. We have configuration in the in the device, and we we grab those X paths with Python. We grab the XML template for the northbound for the in actual in instance of the service. We feed those into the LLM, and out comes a really nice reconcile template. And we have the automation of the removal and applying the template and checking for the diff. But as you've seen, if the diff set is found or the XML template doesn't load properly, we will try to repeat the query to the LLM to actually get a better answer and then try that one. Okay. As I mentioned, they don't understand corrective instructions. Chat GPT-4 and Llama 3 with a really, really big model can do that. But as I noticed a few days ago, the Llama 3 70B model needs more memory than I have in my Merck station at home. And I have 128 gigabytes of memory, so imagine you would need a little bit more than that to actually run that model. So some solutions to the problem, feed the conversation to another model and ask for a quality assessment. This would be a good thing, if, unless the models are not capable of actually correcting their own responses based on feedback, which is what I found. And the quality assessment is it's like patting the other model on the back, saying, oh, you did a really good job. Great. So I try to, I, it, it, I can see that it's garbage. And the other model is saying, oh, 8 out of 10. Perfect. Needs some improvement. But it actually doesn't, doesn't solve our problem. Yeah, so another tried solution is, is kind of, having the models talk to each other uh, as a teacher and pupil and try to get a better kind of um, response at the end. But again, if you don't have the corrective capabilities, then this is kind of pointless. Right? Solution three, use ChatGPT for Omni. Or ChatGPT for Turbo, as you've seen in the demo. So, how do you improve the OpenLLM's results, at least theoretically? You have the feedback loops to quantify the accuracy. Is this template similar or different to the sample given? Is it likely to function as expected? If not, then uh, repeat the query, right? So if the quality assessment grade is too low, then we don't even bother trying to redeploy the package. OK, so yeah, this is what I mentioned about the teacher-pupil thing. What I have done is having an error dictionary like uh, listing common package reload uh, errors and the correction of those errors. Uh, and those work very well with ChatGPT4, but not in the other models. Yet. So what is ChatGPT4 Turbo actually successful in doing? It's matching the input template to the XPaths of the southbound. It's creating all the nice for each instruction sets, which are quite painful to do if you're even if you know NSO very well. And it also can change from having just one instance being reconciled with one XML template to a generic one, which actually can go loop over all the instances, which is quite clever, I think. 
and it does simple corrections of the XPath conte context based on your uh, queries. So, yeah, so the simpler the stacked service logic, the better the results will be for you, basically. And this will all be available on GitHub very soon. Any questions? Right, friendly reminder about um, Slido, where you can submit your questions to Mikael, if you have any. Uh, there are some people interested in the book, um, but I think uh, <laughs> you have to go and look on Amazon, maybe, to get the book. Because um, I think we're running low on them. But, um, yeah, Mikael. Can, can, can you give out more books, Niklas? We have more books. We have more books, okay. We have more prizes. All right, so more activity will qualify you for maybe winning a book, right? So submit your slide of questions. Uh, Mikael, I mean, you're uh, um, um, an architect in our services organization. Do you, yes. do you think that you're going to be uh, using this in, in uh, customer engagements anytime soon? or? Absolutely. Based on the, the, the positive, I mean, I started this journey based on just trying out ChatGPT4. Uh, I think it was in December, and I've, I played. I have been thinking about this problem for some time: how to have reconciliation based on the X paths on the CDB. Uh, but it's like, if, if for a human to do the, do it, it's it's okay, but it becomes quite painful when you have to do the context mapping and and actually uh, when you when you look at it uh, yourself. But if you can feed those into the model and actually get a usable result, which I was very surprised to get with Chat TV4, uh, then uh, that's where I thought like we need to have a package for this and we need to use it for our customer delivery because uh, today. Uh, reconciliation is seen as this uh, painful uh, Python heavy development, which it doesn't have to be, and it shouldn't be. Yeah, maybe with uh, with the help of AI, it can be a lot easier. Uh, here's a here's a question from the audience. Uh, in your experience, how steep was the learning curve to get up to speed? Uh, I mean, we talked a little bit about where you learned on YouTube and. John Copabianco's channel and, and other sources. I wouldn't um, say it's too steep. I mean, it's uh, if if you're if you're familiar with Python programming and in general and 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 you know about something about uh, the LLMs, it's it's good. But you don't have to learn to know anything basically to start using them. Yeah. And and there's a lot of good YouTube videos online. You just Search YouTube, and you can get instructions to do basically anything. Okay, yeah, very good. Good, good advice to the audience if they want to start getting up to speed with this technology. So now we're going to shift to the next topic, which is um, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Michael. Thank you.